On today's adventure, I'm going to be going on another gator diving expedition in the Everglades. Now before we get started though, I have to give you guys the usual disclaimer. Please keep in mind you should never, ever enter the water where alligators or crocodiles may be present. Never attempt anything you see me doing in any of my videos really, and keep in mind that I'm a professional alligator handler and have been working hands on with these animals for about 20 years. Being in the water with alligators is extremely dangerous. I have had alligators try to attack me multiple times and I've had multiple friends who have been bitten severely and people are on occasion killed doing things like this. So please again never ever attempt anything you're seeing here today. Now here you can see me snorkeling along searching for wildlife to photograph. You can see I have my big underwater camera right there in my other hand and I have a GoPro and a stick filming as I go along. So I'm hoping to encounter some cool fish, some turtles, who knows, you know, just kind of exploring and seeing what I can find today. But of course in the forefront of my mind are alligators, both for safety but also just because it's awesome to see them and what do you know, it's the first thing that I end up finding here is this alligator hanging out on the edge. This is about a seven to eight foot alligator and it's just sitting on this limestone cliff on the edge of this area in the Everglades. So most of the Everglades is relatively shallow with some of these deeper spots with these kind of limestone cliffs. So this one is just literally hanging out right on the edge of the cliff. And you can see here, it's actually blind in this eye. And if we take a look at the rest of the body, you'll see a lot of scars, a lot of damage on this alligator. So it likely lost its eye in a fight. And you can see all these other scars across the osteoderms on the back. This gator has definitely been through some brawls, but overall looks relatively healthy, you know? And uh, man, look at those teeth marks. Oof, and, uh, when, you, when you see that on a gator that's bigger than you and you're in the water, you're like, ooh, wonder who did that to him, you know? But overall, this gator's looking pretty good. Now as I come around the side onto the alligator's good eye, you can see it start creeping towards me, coming to check me out a little bit and have a look. Not being aggressive, just a little bit curious, but you can see that's the good eye on this side of the alligator. So it does have a very good vision on this side, no eye on the other side though. It's actually very common to see alligators missing an eye or sometimes even blind in both eyes since you know injuries are very common for a predatory animal like this that can be territorial and when you fight with your jaws you know eyes are likely to get hit. Now this is after I circle back a little bit later and the alligator creeped up into the bushes a little bit more but uh, holding very very still. Probably hunting right now hoping to uh, bump into a fish in there if it can. People love to think of alligators as these high speed pursuit predators and sure sometimes they do pursue their prey but most of the time it's all about ambush. It's doing exactly what this one is doing right now, holding still, acting like a log, blending in with the environment and hoping for a fish or other creature to come over and bump into the alligator and be snatched up. Now here you might also notice the eye has that kind of bluish film over it and this is the good eye. That's actually normal. That's the alligator's nictitating membrane up protecting the eye, a third transparent eyelid. After exploring the shallow limestone shelf and all this vegetation for a little bit, I decided it's time to venture out into the more open, deeper, murkier water out here. It is much much more creepy, way more sketchy. You can't see the bottom, you can't see much of anything really. And uh, yeah, it's, it's downright spooky. I mean, even for me, I do this stuff all the time. It's definitely spooky being out there in this deeper water where you can't see anything. Once I'm down on the bottom holding my breath, you can see just how much more dark it is down here and how much silt there is in the water and how much lower the visibility is overall. So not only is the murkiness a factor, but there's less light down here penetrating through. So it's a much, much darker environment and a lot more difficult to navigate and see where you're going. Now as I ascend back up to the surface, you'll notice the water becomes increasingly more clear, better visibility, and you know, just overall a more uh, welcoming feeling to the water as opposed to being down on the bottom. But of course, down on that murky bottom is where a lot of the cool stuff likes to hang out. Yeah. 
on one of my next dives down, I notice it's very stirred up. There's some bubbles coming off the bottom and that is an indicator that there's something big moving along on the bottom right here. So I'm gonna creep up very slowly, very carefully and investigate and see what it is. As I move through the silt and the murk and the darkness, something starts to materialize. See it right there? 10 foot alligator. You guys see him yet? Now it should be pretty obvious. This is what you gotta watch out for when you're out there. It's very, very difficult to see. These are ambush predators and they are just amazing at blending in the environment here. I went back up, got a breath, and came back down after I gave this silt some time to settle. And now we can actually see a little bit more clearly the alligator hanging out on the bottom. So you can see that full body right there. And again, this is about a, about a nine to 10 foot American alligator hanging out on the bottom. Now thankfully, it's being very calm, no signs of aggression or agitation, just kind of hanging out on the bottom, maybe waiting an ambush for prey, something like that. I'm of course very, very careful in my movements. I stay very calm, very deliberate movements. I do not want to disturb the alligator in any way, both for my safety and for his. You know, I don't want to upset him or anything like that. And so throughout this entire encounter, we can see that the alligator is very, very calm, just kind of doing his thing. And I move off to let him be. I then head back over to that limestone ledge and hang out for a second, catch my breath, review some photos before heading over to see if I can get a couple more shots. Now as I go to head down again, you just lose him. I mean, it's like he's gone. You're back in this murky stuff and now I have to uh, track down the area I was in again just because everything looks the same. But hey, check that out. There's a peacock bass over there. So there's a couple fish hanging around down here too, but uh, you can just really see how easy it is to get disoriented and turn around in this murky water. By now you can see that the silt has settled down quite a bit and the water is relatively pretty clear right now. Much, much better than when we first started here. And you can actually see his arms are buried in the silt over there, which is kind of cool to see. Now you also see the alligator's beautiful white teeth. That's because they do shed and regrow their teeth, cycling through several thousand in a lifetime. So that's why they always have such nice pretty teeth. It's then time to say goodbye to the alligator. I go ahead and leave him there undisturbed just as I found him and move on to explore and see what else I can find. Now when I'm creeping around on the bottom, I usually put my hand down and actually kind of walk with my hand instead of kicking so it doesn't stir up the silt. And while I was doing that, I felt something down in the mud. So I reach in there and feel around and check out what I pull out of there. At first, I thought it was a human skull, okay, but it's actually a turtle shell. So this turtle shell looks like it's been buried down there quite a while. Uh, the bone is stained black from the mud. And yeah, speaking of mud, look at all that stuff coming out from inside of it. That's pretty wild, pretty crazy. So this is this is likely a red-bellied turtle or a peninsular slider. Can't really tell since he's dead. But um, yeah, good good looking shell. It's well, half of it at least. Part of it is broken away. So I'm gonna see if I can get some of that dirt out of there, clear it up some, then we can have a better look at it. So as you can see, the back of it is cracked off, but the fact that it is for the most part intact leads me to believe that it was not killed by an alligator. Although right there, you can see some scars on the shell. Those are teeth marks from an alligator trying to eat this turtle, but it definitely survived that because if an alligator had killed it, well, there wouldn't be a shell to look at. He would have ate the whole thing. So this turtle likely died of some other natural causes. Now that wraps up our dive guys. I had a great time, had two awesome encounters with alligators, got to check them out. And uh, you know, as I wrap up here for the video, I wanna just reshare this one clip because it's pretty cool as I talk about safety. 
I know I already touched on safety in the beginning, but I cannot stress this enough. Never, ever try this on your own. Never enter the water where alligators are present. People die, okay? This is not a joke at all. I'm not trying to be dramatic, but I know a lot of people watch my videos and they really enjoy them and some find it inspirational. And they're like, oh man, that looks cool. I wanna do what this guy's doing. No, do not do that, okay? Uh, again, I just can't stress this enough. People die. I've had multiple friends get severely injured. I know one guy that had uh, his arm ripped off right at the elbow. Alligator ate the rest of it. He barely survived that, you know, and other people don't make it. So again, I just cannot stress this enough. I know it looks really easy and the gators seem pretty calm because I know how to do this and I've been handling alligators my entire life. And if things do go wrong, and they do, and I have had multiple alligators try to attack me, I know how to handle that situation. And if you don't, well, you're probably going to die. So again, I just cannot stress this enough. Never, ever try this on your own, guys. And now I'll end the video with some photos I took this day. Hope you guys enjoy them and leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Hit like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next adventure.